Well, the timing of that applause was a little uh, interesting because <laughs> obviously it has nothing to do with that shot. But I'm talking to uh, the gentlemen that are currently involved with the Corbon Company and Glazer Safety Slum. Uh, TA. TA and? Scott. Scott. Okay. I'm Stuart. We've already had a little bit of a discussion, correct, gentlemen? Yes. Okay. Very good. So is it safe to say that, let me go, let's go to the history. Glazer Safety Slug uh, developed in the early, early 1980s. 70s. Early 70s? Yeah, about 1974, I believe. It's okay. Somewhere around there. It's developed, some would say, for the air marshal program back in the 70s. Uh, it was. Uh, for the devised, fuselage yeah, protection, yeah, right? Exactly. Devised to be a, a, an ammunition uh, that didn't over penetrate. So, and then from there, it's moved on to its current design to today. Uh, they were all made by hand back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, As I shot, well know, right, I just shared exactly. a story with you of right. uh, acquiring some. The, way, the packaging was not innovative, but it was a very interesting. Yes, exactly. Uh, Block of wood with holes. Traditionally sold in the past in a six pack uh, at a very high price point. We've tried to bring it into the market at a, a lower price uh, for a, a, a greater number of rounds. Uh, the round itself has been modified over the years. It was originally capped with a flat plastic piece uh, in the mid 90s. Uh, the design of the bullet was changed to, to accommodate a polymer ball in the end of it, uh, as well as the shot inside of it was then hydraulically swaged inside the, the bullet jacket itself. So the application of the shot was was altered? Yes. Uh, in, in the past, the shot was just poured in with a, with a small ladle into a, a bullet jacket and then sealed and was then loaded into a finished round where now the bullet is pressed on a, on a machine that uh, tamps the shot down into the bullet jacket itself and locks that in there, and at which point in time we place the polymer ball in there, uh, form the nose of the bullet uh, for better feeding and, and better functioning of the bullet as you see here uh, in this, uh, in this clear uh, ballistic gel here. Right. So. Now the, the pressing aspect, does that allow for more for more pellets to be put into the into the cup, or is it, it, it just a... It, it allows for better consistency and weight and accuracy, because uh, uh, you don't have anything shifting around inside the jacket itself when you go to fire it, so it helps the accuracy of the bullet, uh, so there's no change in dynamics as it's being fired. Uh, it also allows for a, a more consistent expansion when it strikes uh, either soft tissue or, in this regard, this clear ballistics gel. So you can see how it's the shot itself has come apart in a radio pattern and been essentially dumped into that ballistic gel. Right, in a more of a like a conical, more pattern. conical, uniform pattern. Right. It, it helps to eliminate heavy sides, uh, but more importantly, it increases the accuracy of it and the effectiveness of it. Okay. Uh, and uh, traditionally, just a, a, a common copper. Jacket was used. Yes, is that correct. the case now? Yep, it is still the case. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep. Uh, we use a, a uh, low density polyethylene ball in there uh, to help initiate that expansion when it strikes uh, the intended target. The ball will recoil into the shot itself and help break the jacket open, and then the the rifling that's in in the barrel of the gun imparts the twist, as we all know in bullets that helps distribute that shot, that twist helps the shot go out in a radial pattern once it's in the, the intended target, whether it's this clear ballistic gel or whatever that whatever target medium that may be. To be. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, very well. So, And it still allows for uh, the original intent being to uh, not allow for over penetration of certain Correct. targets. Exactly. Yep. So, you know, if we're, right. if we're hitting something else, we have that distribution of the, the projectile. The projectile and the energy that, that it contains. Uh, these are designed, uh, two different grades that we make. We, we make a blue, silver, blue and a silver type uh, uh, laser safety slug. The blue is designed for uh, climates where you'd have, uh, expect to encounter an adversary wearing light clothing. The silver is designed for heavier clothing in colder climates. Coats, uh, Heavy leather, jackets, clothing. leather, exactly. And with that, you get a slightly deeper penetration, as you can see here. This is a 45 auto plus P silver, 145 grade blazer safety slug. Uh, 
the silver contains number six shot inside of it, where the blue would contain a number 12 shot, much finer shot particle, uh, larger shot pattern, but less penetration. We expect those to go roughly five to seven inches in a medium such as this, where the silver, as you see here, has gone roughly eight inches or so through this, this block right here. And that's what you would expect to see with that particular type of bullet. Um, the shot particles are bigger, so they, they do carry a, a little bit more mass. So when they do strike soft tissue, or like in this, this uh, gelatin medium here, uh, you can see the trails left behind. Uh, right. Behind them, so. And that heavier shot allows for being able to punch through that, uh, say, heavier clothing or more right, dense exactly. clothing. Right, exactly. Yeah, or multiple layers of clothing. Right. that you would expect for someone to have a northern climate. So. Right. Or, you know, not to, a little bit of levity, or if you've got a really, really big tubby guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, no, 100%. Yeah. Uh, uh, with a traditional hollow point, you should expect to see penetrations uh, in the 12 to 14 to 16, some as much as 18 inches. Or this here, uh, you're in that 6 to 8, 5 to 7, depending on the grade. You know, a larger adversary, whatever that happens to be, two-legged or four-legged, uh, the hollow point is definitely has the chance of over-penetrating, and that's why the benefit of this round with the limited penetration is a true plus for personal defense. Right, right. If Very good. Another aspect of the round, it's designed to, upon contact with a hardened surface, uh, concrete, uh, painted drywall, things of that nature, glass. Uh, to come apart and depart that energy without risk or lessened risk of injuring someone. Such as through a ricochet or over penetration of a wall. Correct, correct. If it were to ricochet you know, or a, a poorly placed shot, uh, you know, there's less of a chance of collateral damage per se. Uh, I've spoken with individuals that have had uh, negligent discharges in their own, their own homes. There was a gentleman that, that fired one of these 45s off, it was a blue uh, variety. It went through his window and it was upstairs bedroom and crossed the 15 feet between his house and his neighbor's house. And thankfully what struck his neighbor's house was just the internal shot. And it peppered the neighbor's house and prevented a potential calamity from happening. So, or at the very least a big time complaint about yes. breaking a guy's window. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yep. So he was able to uh, apologize to the neighbor and the next spring paint the neighbor's trim around the window with the lead hit struck and, and fix the problem without having to, uh, to go any deeper into his pockets. Mitigating so, any serious yep, complications. Right. Exactly. Uh, they are, they are uh, essentially a, a somewhat safer round than, than what you would expect with a normal jacket at all point in terms of over penetration. And hence so, that original name. Yes, exactly. Yeah, well, safety safety slug. Slug, so. Very good. So. Now, the uh, as far as production, I'm going to go ahead and pan back over here a little bit. This is the man who now has uh, at least somewhat of the reins of the company. Am I correct? Yes. Very good. And uh, so production, we anticipate production to be ramping up any time, or has it's, it already happened? It's already started. OK. We've, we've already started producing some of our other bullet lines. Uh, the Glazer Safety Slug and Glazer Powerball will come online shortly. We're hoping within the next 30 days or so. so Available calibers will be what? Um, the typical typical calibers we've always offered in the past run from 32 auto all the way up to 45 and with both Powerball and Glazer. Uh, so you'll be able to get all of the popular self-defense calibers, 389 mil, uh, 40 Smith & Wesson, 10 millimeter, 45 auto. Uh, we do offer a 45 Colt version or older firearms. So, uh, and now there was a time when uh, 38 and 357 was available. Is yep, that the yep, case? That, okay. that will continue to be the case in the in the revolver revolver cartridges. You'll be able to get 38 Special as well as 357 Magnum, uh, 44 Magnum. So Which is going to be? You could tell that was going to be my yep, next question. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yep, 44 Magnum will be available. Now there was a time that rifle cartridges were also available in this configuration. Is that the case? Uh, and, and, Going forward, not at this time. Okay. Uh, that's something that uh, demand was low enough that uh, it, it just wasn't 
uh, viable to continue it didn't, to produce it, it didn't that. justify the... Right, right. exactly. Okay. The, the cost in making this particular projectile is, is rather high. Uh, when we're in the manufacturing process, there tends to be a high scrap rate uh, for this... Through this quality control? Through quality control, exactly. Okay. So uh, it's one of those things that uh, in the rifle side of things, there just wasn't enough demand for it. There's enough other projectiles out on the market that, that will perform perform in regard to uh, terminal ballistics almost the same as these in terms of safety with and your French projectiles and everything else that are now on the market and they're, the price that we can deliver it to our customer is not at a, at a point where it's fair to anyone. So, in right. terms of that, so. so uh, an individual or organization still in Possession of the rifle cartridges probably has a bit of a, for la lack of a better word, a collector's piece at this point. Collector's point. piece, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because there's guys that collect yeah, ammo. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, so, so. Uh, the rifle stuff, like I said, uh, there's no current plans to get back into production on that. So. But pistol stuff, we're hoping to be back into full production on Glazer uh, within the next 30 days or so. Very well. Now, uh, we, we focused really on Glazer safety slides, but uh, part of the Part of the company, part of the assets of the uh, the acquisition and transition, what have you, was also Corborn. Correct. And what's our sit rep with our situation with Corborn? Um, right now, we're we're back in full production of our DPX line of ammunition. Uh, Nine mil, three eighty, and forty five shipped in the, in the the last few days. Uh, and when we get back from the show here now, we're going to be moving on to. Uh, 40 Smith and Wesson and 10 millimeter and a few others that are the back orders are quite high on. So uh, distributors all across the United States have been receiving the, the, the 9, 380, and 45 DPX. And from there, we're going to move on to the Jacket and Hall Point line and uh, continue on with production and try and get our back orders filled as quickly as possible. Very well. How long has uh, production been out of, well, how long has the ammunition been out of production? Approximately. Uh, approximately. About three to six months. Um, over the last year, we have been producing some some projectiles. Uh, it's just been on a uh, availability basis. Uh, the components were there that, that we would produce that. Uh, now, going forward, we're going to be able to get back to ramp up production ramp up more appropriately. Exactly. Very good. And, and, and go ahead and fill those back orders. Will Corbin? You know, now that I think about it, I. Believe uh, I still have some 4570 cartridges. Yep. Are they doing the uh, yep. the rifle cartridges as yes. well? Yes, yep. okay. absolutely. We're going to continue on with our full product catalog of uh, the core original, original Corbon lineup. Corbon brand, exactly. There will be no changes uh, to the performance or any aspects thereof. Uh, the, it's going to be the same as it was today, as it was five years ago. So there's not going to be any any changes to the quality or performance aspects of the ammunition. So. Very well. Now you highlighted earlier that there had been a uh, uh, an attempt to reduce cost. Again, as we both know, the, the, those cartridges were pretty expensive yes. when they came out. So there was, there was this uh, attempt or an effort to reduce cost. Is right. that still going to transition with this acquisition to yes. the best of your knowledge? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're uh, by bringing the 20 round count box out, been able to streamline production enough to be able to, to offer that at a, a lower price point okay. than what we had before in the past. Can you give me an estimate of about what MSRP would be on a 20 round box of 45 ACP or 40 Smith and Wesson? Um, it's going to be in the mid mid forty dollar area. It's 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 not your entry level ammunition by any means. It is a premium ammunition, uh, but I believe it's going to be in about the, the forty dollar price range. Well, so, if so. we adjust it for inflation, yes. Um, then that means it's definitely much less expensive than the original dollar around Correct. That, yep. that that it was introduced yep. at back yep. in it's, that time. And in the, the not so distant past, we were selling the six packs uh, for approximately fifteen dollars. So you were you were approaching that two to three dollar around area for the six packs. But we've been able to get the cost down on production and to move into that twenty pack uh, box, which is uh, more in line with. With the rest of the ammunition industry, and right. be able to, and that's, to offer that's better the other value thing. for yeah. our customers. Yeah, so. packaging and, and uh, uh, 
uh, availability. Yes. And you know why have to buy you know four or five packages yes. of ammunition exactly. to be able to fill up a magazine? Exactly. Outstanding. So yeah, well that's good to see too. How long ago did they bring in the twenty round box? Twenty round box has been about three years now. About three years ago. Okay, so there was an attempt and a, yes. a movement to adjust yes. for current trends. Yeah, exactly. This Very is, well. This has been put in place over time, so it's just taken. Outstanding. Anything else that uh, you want to mention? Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Congratulations on the new company. I think uh, you're going to be, uh, obviously, hopefully it's a, a productive and a, a profitable enterprise, but also, quite frankly, uh, it's a, a product that I think has a, a very large uh, spot in the community. So thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Have a safe trip home.